Well, with the holidays approaching, so are those pesky unwanted guests. Ooh. No, I'm not talking about your in-laws. <laughs> I'm talking about allergies. <laughs> you were terrible. Could be, though. I love it. Here with tips on avoiding the average allergies this time of the year is the medical director of allergy and asthma care of New York, Dr. Clifford Bassett. Hello, welcome to the show. My mother has asthma, so she's going to be watching. She's going to love mm. this segment, so well, knock it out of the park. Allergies, okay? and, allergies and asthma don't discriminate. My own son has asthma. Now he's an elite athlete. Oh, so well. the bottom line is plan ahead. And we're talking about being proactive before the holidays so everyone can have a great, fun time and also be healthy, okay. particularly if they have family members or kids with allergies. Well, let's start with parties. There's a lot of soirees going on for the holiday season. So you also say that there are a lot of hidden allergens within those parties that mm. happen. That's right. During the time of the year, we let our guard down, cocktail parties, maybe a few too many cocktails. Well, People... What's so... wrong with that? <laughs> well, that's okay as long as you don't have to be vigilant. For example, millions of Americans have food allergies. Oh, okay. And it's no joke, and we'll talk about that today in ways to try and reduce risk and still have a great holiday. But let's and... start with the candles. Now, mm -hmm. apparently, candles are an issue. What's wrong with a scented candle? Yeah, especially if it has Some like that peppermint. Pine, peppermint. Pine. If you have allergies or sinus problems or asthma, you're very easily irritated from irritants. Smoke Oh. fragrance, cleaning chemicals, and candles, it's combustible. So it's petroleum products burning, and the smoke can be very irritating. Okay. Some like soy candles. My preference is, ready for this? Yes. Battery-operated candles. Oh, oh, really? Because they, like, flicker. It makes it look like the ambiance is there. They can be there. quite nice and quite lovely, and you don't have the combustion, less smoke, less irritation to individuals who have allergies, sinus problems, and a respiratory problems such as asthma. May make now, a difference. That's about, a very good idea. Here you have, I've seen a lot of people with these little oil sticks. You put oil in the bottom and it rises up the stick to smell the room. Is that safer than, say, a candle that's scented? Again, anything with less burning is going to be preferred. Mm -hmm. okay. But some people, particularly my patients, they go to a department store and they're spraying the colognes and fragrances right. and their eyes are easily irritated. So the eyes and the eyelids are very sensitive and people can get headaches and irritation from scents and chemicals. And so it depends on who you are. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about air quality and how to improve air quality as well. Okay. So what's in the air can affect you, particularly, again, if you have allergies and asthma. Again. Plan ahead and have a what I call allergy action plan before the holidays begin. Allergy, allergy action, action plan. Action plan. I, like I like that. that. So what's the action plan that we should put in place for food? Because there's always somebody at a party with food. But wait, you said there's a quiz you have for us about food allergies. What's that? Well, let's take a quiz. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm going to get an A. <laughs> I always get A's on my quizzes. And the winner gets a non-expense paid trip to Hawaii. Oh, oh, in that case, all right. <laughs> I'm not even in the game. <laughs> no, come back in here. All so, right. What is the most common food allergy thought about via a recent study that was an estimate of food allergies in adults? Hmm. Peanut allergy. Your good try. I'm gonna say since it's not peanut, uh, shellfish. Yes. Oh. We're actually seeing a surge in adults with shellfish and fish allergy. My theory is if you look at many urban areas, they have sushi restaurants in every corner. That's right. true. And it's becoming more prevalent in our diet. We have an internationalization of cuisine. And shrimp is actually one of the most common, among other shellfish, to be causing food allergies in adults. And in some estimates, it may be 2.5% of the population. That's a very high number. That's true. And as a result of it, sometimes there are hidden ingredients in foods. There was recently a patient of mine who went to a restaurant that had Italian food, and they actually put mm. seafood and fish inside the marinara sauce. Mm. Also, we know that peanuts and nuts cause a lot of serious and scary reactions. And that's the only thing most people think of is the nuts. That's my first Don't reaction. try to make me feel better. Uh, no, it's okay. Everybody <laughs> thinks that. <laughs> so, as you, you won, okay? You won. <laughs> as you see here, I brought a can. Why is the can helpful? Because sauces during the holiday, gravies, mm -hmm. go to parties, there are dips. There may be cross-contact, cross-contamination. Someone oh. takes a piece of peanut or a nut, dip it in the dip. Now, also, I need my patients, which I do every day here in our New York City practice, is to be label detectives oh. and learn how to decode labels. That also contains artificial colors ingredients, and some people, particularly children, may be very mm -hmm. sensitive to artificial colorants, and the U.S. government is looking at that now in terms so of yellow and red dyes and what's safe for us in terms of trying to let people know that the huh. small percentage of people who have food additives may also affect you during the holidays, particularly. So what's the alternative, what should we do? Read a label, know if you have an allergy, see an allergist, get tested, find out what you need to avoid and have what I call a treatment program, okay. which is based upon education, confirming the diagnosis, and of course preparedness. Okay. Carry an epinephrine auto injector if you have history of food mm, allergies and so true. forth. 
And again, now, if you are going to a party, isn't it incumbent upon the guest to tell the host that I'm allergic to shrimp or I do have peanut allergies? Should you be the one who tells the people that? Or? I think it's all about the letter C, communication. Communication. Mm -hmm. And you want to have communication in writing. When patients go to restaurants and they eat in other people's homes, we prepare them a chef ingredient card for food allergies. They give one to the waiter, one to the kitchen staff, so everyone's on the same page. Gotcha. Otherwise, there's okay. cross-contact, slicing utensils, cooking surfaces. You want to reduce risk. And it's all about being smart, being proactive, particularly if you have a family member or a child with food allergies. You also see here we have gluten-free products. Mm. And gluten-free products, people with gluten intolerance, in addition to celiac, is very apropos now. It people feel be better common. when they eat less gluten. Yeah. Some people have celiac disease and they really need for medical reasons to avoid it. There are many wonderful gluten-free products and for mm -hmm. Thanksgiving and the holidays, we want to prepare things that are safe and enjoyable for our guests and take a couple steps back. If you go to a restaurant on a high volume event, it's a holiday season, call ahead, speak to the chef, let them know what your needs may be to prevent mm. bad outcomes. And when you do it safely, the holidays can be awesome and can be very helpful, especially if you have food intolerances or food allergies, which millions of people throughout the world have. Okay, now we covered food allergies, but I know a lot of times after we get done eating and Thanksgiving is over, we break out the Christmas decorations. And you say that could also be a problem. If you don't store Why? the Christmas decorations properly in a bag and seal it from the previous season, it's uh -huh. gonna be loaded with dust and molds and things like that. Mm -hmm. So things that are not washable, you can wash them with mild detergent. Okay. And you want to make sure you store it properly so they're not laden with dust and molds and other things that can drive you crazy. So should you literally dust off your ornaments? You can wash off your ornaments really? if they're washable. And okay. if they're porous, you can wash them in a dishwasher okay. or washing machine. Hmm. But you just want to be careful. Now, some people say to me, Dr. Bassett, should I have a fresh Christmas tree or should I have an artificial tree? Which is better if you have allergies? That's true. Which hmm. is better? Well, they did a study a few years ago by one of my friends who was an allergist in Connecticut. And we found that when you bring a Christmas tree inside, a pine tree, mm -hmm. it contains a lot of molds from outdoors. And really? within a couple of days, a lot of people will start developing allergy symptoms, mm. cough, itchy eyes, irritation, and actually you measure the mold level, it's mm -hmm. quite high. So you want to shake the tree off before you bring it indoors. Okay. And if you have allergies, again, work with your allergist to get the right medications and the right avoidance. We also have an air filter here. If mm. you have pet allergies, which is 10 to 20% of the population who have allergies have pet allergies, we want to actually filter the air, and it's particularly good for indoor allergens as well weather, as weather, outdoor allergens okay. as well. And this is a HEPA air filter, which is great to filter the air. How we does also, that work, exactly? It has several layers of filtration to filter pet allergen mm -hmm. particles, pollens, molds, and so forth. It can be very helpful, particularly if you have indoor air pollutants. Now, is it because the, all the windows are closed, it's colder during this time of the year that it's exactly. so prominent? Exactly. The EPA has said that indoor air quality actually may be worse than outdoor air quality. So it's wow. no joke, especially if you have allergies or respiratory problems. So should you open the windows and let all the mold and dust out? Or well, will you be letting the windows in? Anytime we can increase the ventilation indoors. I also recommend a series of plants that actually help to clean the air and scrub the air we can share with your guests as well. Okay. What type of plants? Like what plants? Ficus plants, corn plants, and I gave you a list of 15 to 20 plants that NASA has oh. found from Skylab experiments. They actually clean and sanitize and scrub the air, which is a wonderful green concept. Wow. Inexpensive, going to make people feel good. It's going to be healthier again for the holidays. Okay. That's a great idea. That's yeah. a great gift. We also have a hygrometer. Mm -hmm. People in the winter. Uh, what? Hygrometer. <laughs> okay. People Never for the winter, what they like to do is they like to turn their homes into greenhouses. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they like to over humidify. <laughs> right. You want to limit the humidification or the moisture in the air to 50 to 45 percent or below, okay. which is better. And if you increase the humidity to be beyond that, you'll actually increase the living dust mites, molds, and make indoor allergies much worse. So it's about a balance. Okay. And so you want it warm but not too moist. Correct. Okay. Got it. Okay. Now one of the main things that I like to do when I'm dreaming of a white Christmas <laughs> is curl up by the fireplace and really? just relax. Aww, Let it, yeah, because it smells so great. It's nice warmth. But you, again, say that could be a problem. <laughs> if you have respiratory problems, sinus problems, or allergies, being by a fireplace or a fire-burning stove, that can be an irritant and can bother respiratory passages. If it doesn't apply to you, enjoy all the way. Mm -hmm. oh, but okay, if it then. bothers you, again, increase your ventilation mm -hmm. and try not to have things inside the home that are irritants or indoor pollutants that can aggravate many people, millions of people who have allergies, sinus problems, and respiratory problems. Also, skin allergies. Mm -hmm. People put fragrances. They put all kinds of products mm -hmm. during the holidays, cosmetics. You may have contact dermatitis or a skin allergy, Get a patch test, find out before you put the products on or use hair dyes wow. and so forth and find out if you do have any skin allergies that you can actually figure out before you apply them. 
by putting simple patch tests on. Like eczema or something? Eczema can mm -hmm. be made worse by skin allergies. You mm -hmm. might have a hair dye allergy or a cosmetic allergy, even nickel and metal. We're actually seeing people now with gold allergies. Oh, come on. I've never heard of a gold allergy. So I, I love when your gold. neck turns green. I love gold. <laughs> or is that just from cheap gold? <laughs> so the bottom line is the allergy season. Mm -hmm. Plan ahead. Have okay. an allergist okay. in your family is even better. Yeah, yeah. you're Come on coming over for the over Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner, aren't you? <laughs> sure will. Dr. Bassett, oh, my mom's gonna love you. Yes. So real quick, tell <laughs> us where we can learn more about all of these allergies and how to avoid them. Well, allergyandasthmarelief.org is a website okay. put out by the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. Foodology.org is another website as well. We have our own website, which is allergyepidemic.com, mm -hmm. and our Twitter as well, which is allergyreliefny. Those are all great places to go to to learn more about allergies, how it affects your family, and how to find an allergist in your community or town. I can tell all your mom's going to have a great oh, holiday season is, this time she around. Is. <laughs> yeah, a cough free allergy yes. this season. So thank you so much My for being here. My pleasure for being here. All thank right. you. And you're watching Arise Entertainment 360.